I started a video, so I was gonna walk up, but that's cool. That's the gym life. Always happens. Yeah. All right, where are you feeling now? My arms. <laughs> So I'm going to do a different version since we're going to talk and have a mic. So I'm going to do a straight leg version of this with targeting lower abs. So support when you do this, your hips want to come off the pad a little bit. That's going to engage your lower abs. Anytime your pelvis is moving forward or up or off the ground or off the pad, that is engaging lower abs. How many did you do? 15. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we'll do a couple sets here and then we'll move on to upper abs. That you got to get used to when training with a partner or a couple constant seat adjustments. <laughs> okay. okay so we're going to do this abdominal crunch machine uh, i'm trying to get deeper cuts in the abs so it's very good for upper serratus not so much obliques i'm going to get into a pull over situation come down So when you come down, really contract as much as you can and try to bring it up in a controlled manner. I was kind of slinging it on a few of them. But you don't need to do that many reps uh, with a weighted ab machine or table crunches because this is going to build a muscle. So, okay. She was working on a cable crunch, targeting the upper abs serratus. A little bit of the lat, depending on how you're doing it. Uh, she actually showed me this technique where she sits on the back of her heel all the way down. And I actually feel like I get a better contraction on that. So if you're ever doing these and don't feel like you're getting the best out of them, try out the Lala movement. Yeah, it's the lower abs. Yeah. She's got a better mind muscle connection and form on these than I do. So. I think that comes from dance obviously like from years of dance training yeah. they're good we'll move into our arm portion of the workout we're starting with preacher curls for the biceps doing a warm-up set here big thing is is when she goes to the bottom like she's doing she's not completely letting her elbows lock out all the way puts a lot of undue stress on the biceps and elbow when yeah, it starts to hurt yeah Stop. <laughs> yeah this is one you don't want to go to complete complete failure on better safe than sorry good babe all right how many was that 12. Nice. okay okay so I'm going to do my all-out set on this. So the way I start with this is I never start at the bottom because just like what I was just talking about, it's going to be like this and put a lot of stress here. So what I do is I lean forward, kind of row it up to me, hoist it up, and I'm sitting there. Alright. slow and negative. There's an elbow pop. I know, something popped. <laughs> Lay down. Fast back. It happens in your 30s. Yeah. The popping begins. 30s pushing 40. So 
that, like I said, this is not one you want to push to complete failure on just for the risk of injury. And I was controlling the way down because once that starts to fail, all of it's going to fail. That's your strongest contraction. So that's my goal when I'm doing this right now. So now she's about to do her, all that stuff. What's that? Go. Okay. She's ordering me around. <laughs> all right, so we're going to do incline dumbbell curls. This is probably my favorite bicep exercise. We went from doing my least favorite to my favorite. So the big thing on this one is a lot of people get it wrong. This is my warm-up set. Is they don't lean back and let them hang. You let them hang because this one's all about the stretch. Let them hang. So let them hang. You can go like this. If you feel that way. I usually go hammer curl and I come up and twist. Just like so. Let it down slow. Let them hang. Let it down slow. Let the boys hang. <laughs> This is another one that when you start to fail, drop it. Because there's a lot of bicep stuff, the more you think about it, where it puts it a lot of undue stress. So it's better to drop it than tear your bicep from the bone. Yep. So if you're starting to fail, I'm going to do one more set, and that's going to be my big all out set on these, so I don't want to fail because I know I can do the 45s or 50s. But well, there you go. Okay. So, she is doing the twisting formation too. You got some cuts coming out. <laughs> so, a good rep range, what I was just telling her before I hit start or record, is these. I feel like anywhere from six to 10 reps, if you can do 12 on like your warm up, knock your socks off, but you really don't need too, too much on this one. It's mainly just getting that stretch, contraction, just like with most exercises. This is what we're looking for. Okay, we're back. Let's do equipment check, we're good. So with this one, I'm gonna do the same rep range. So when I start to get tired, I'm going to do what's called a rest pause. I'm going to set up on my lap or on the floor again. I'm going to count to 10. I'm going to do a few more. Try to go beyond failure a little bit. Now we got a 10. <clears throat> and since we're in the slip, we'll do two more six, three more. <laughs> Another thing to notice while I'm counting in my head is notice I'm not flinging them up. You can on the last few, but try not to be that guy. Controlled's always better. <clears throat> on a cable machine with a rope. You want to pull it like such and you can either stand like this, you have lower back issues, you want to put behind you, keep the elbows locked in, lock in so man it. We usually do these with dumbbells, but today we decided to claim table machine early. So as I was just telling her. It gets taken. It gets taken. And everybody gets Instagram crazy. Not posting what they're working at. They're just scrolling. Just scrolling. And we got shit to do. <laughs> nice. Alright, so good. So now we're gonna record, record her doing her set. And once again this is working 
a lot of your, you gotta help me with this word. I can't find your bicep, not your tricep, but, but your uh, brachialis. Brachialis. I always say it funny. She's like, what are you talking about? Um, no. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so she's doing her set, working the brachialis. What? <laughs> working the brachialis. All them guns, babe. All right, once again, she's putting her foot behind her for a lot of back support. She's looking fabulous in her sheen like this. Still got the quad pump from the other day. Awesome. Yeah. Are you feeling that in your lower back at all, or no? Like, meaning does it hurt? Yeah. No. Good. Very good. The foot behind helps. So we are moving on to triceps. So we have this tricep for tricep thing that we like to do. It involves a lot of cable stuff. Uh, we'll probably do a couple sets of this. And the last one being to failure, because we do so much tricep stuff on chest and shoulder day that it's not really needed in my opinion. So. We'll probably do two rotations of this. It's a very long thing and fills the triceps up with a lot of blood. And you won't want to do anymore. So. Yeah. Alright. So if you're doing a lot of weight on this exercise, it looks very weird how I have to get started, but I can't just hoist it down this way. I have to like put my backside up to this and then I go down to do it. <laughs> very weird. But it works. Or safe than sorry. <clears throat> oh my voice. So once again, a lot of people don't go all the way back, which is important. And a lot of people end up doing this right here. Yeah, it's not effective at all. So go all the way back. Stretch. Control. Control is the way to go. Nobody gives two craps about how much weight you're moving around doing this kind of stuff. Down movements, but it's hitting different angles. I feel this more on the outer head. When I do the out rope like this, I feel it more on the inner head, and this is just blasts all the way. So, that's it. Alright. Tricep burn. See how there's a horseshoe poking out there. She's getting the full contraction. Doing great. This is really, this is a big burner. I never tried it. Try not to record as much people as we possibly can. So we have to readdress. variation that she's doing right here 
whether she's conscious of it or not is actually really good because the wider you go out with that it's almost like she's doing dips on this and it's actually working her lower peck as well and she's getting a lot of tricep action on this. didn't take much <laughs> did great all right so we finished our ab and arm workout got a few things at the supermarket and we're heading back to the, the farm so we hit up uh, a lower ab exercises lower <laughs> ab exercises we laid up one lower ab exercise and then we did two kind of overall we did two variations of the crunch like i said we're trying to get some more deep striations and cuts in our abs really trying to bring them out and train them like we train every other part of our body because we we don't neglect abs but it's always one of those things where like like something i get made fun of all the time like calves well i'm very guilty of some of them at the end of my workout when i'm exhausted so i've been here lately trying to throw them in in the middle or beginning to try to like tire them out and get some big daddy calves uh, daddy calves yeah, I think uh, we were just talking about how social media and posting. Um, Whether it's Facebook or Instagram or we don't have TikTok anymore. We don't have TikTok anymore, but like uh, we feel like it's very misleading and uh, sometimes almost hurtful. Uh, I would say, I don't, don't want to speak for both of well, us, but like we'll... We work very hard for what we do, and we try to like put stuff out there that helps. Motivational. And motivational, and we'll get we'll post a picture, for example, of what we eat. Thirty likes, forty likes. Mm -hmm. Or if we go out to dinner, <laughs> if we go out to dinner and we post pictures, it's tons a, of people are gonna love it. It's, it's getting its own. We if we're eating advantage. chili cheese fries and like donuts, oh, yeah. we're we're getting the likes. We're getting them. But if we post a fitness post, we're getting maybe two. Yeah. And so if you're ever in a spot where... And this, this goes for Facebook, which is like your friends that you really know. Like yeah. uh, my Facebook is people I know, like from, you know, childhood, family, whatever. It's it's people that we interact with pretty regularly. Pretty regularly. Yeah. And then I'll go to work uh, and then people will be like, hey, I saw your post. It looks great, or like that's very nice, and I really appreciate that kind of stuff. And I'm like, well, you liked my chili cheese fries, but you didn't like. Right, <laughs> I don't understand that. I but really if, don't. So if you're ever feeling like you know you're you're interested in a hobby, uh, or if you're into fitness and you're proud of it and you're posting, just know we probably feel the same about it as you do, and it's yes. very discouraging. And I'll tell you a little story. Super discouraging. That's actually a private one, but like. I very rarely, if you know me well, I don't post too many art pictures anymore. I still, you can ask her, I draw and paint quite a bit. Mm -hmm. She got me back into it a lot, but I don't post it all the time. He's a phenomenal artist. Because when I first started posting my stuff, I would get comments from people that I knew, like, oh, you got a lot of free time on your hands. I still remember those comments, and I'm like, what a... What a shitty thing to say <laughs> to someone, to someone that, about their hobby and about their interests. Yeah. Like, do I judge you for sitting on the couch and yeah. drinking beer and you know watching i don't know bonanza for 25 hours bonanza's great <laughs> never make fun of bonanza i don't know why i said bonanza <laughs> <laughs> like random. you leave Hoss and little joe out of this uh, uh, but if there's ever anything that you're interested in whether it's fitness i know this is a fitness channel but we're also thinking about doing a podcast of like talking about fitness lifestyle relationships yeah because some of these conversations aliens. yeah some of these conversations <laughs> that we have yeah. the two of us like it, they need to be heard they, yeah. they really do. They, they do i think a lot of people will feel similarly and i don't know the thing that is most discouraging for me i feel like on facebook is because like i said those are the people that know you who grew up with you who are your family who love you but like they don't really support and it's like those are the people that you think would be there to support you and to show you love and to like motivate you and um, encourage you all of those things and it just doesn't happen and and like I don't even need it's not about the validation because I know a bunch of people are going to say oh well you just post stuff for validation no we actually do personal training I do meal prep um, this is something 
something we love. This is something we believe in. Yeah. We love living a healthy lifestyle. We want other people to want to love it too. And that's why we do it. Both of us will get messages quite frequently, not all the time, no, people but are quite interested. frequently asking questions about, hey, what's a good exercise for this? Or, hey, what do you need for this? And I'm like, well, and then you're like, you know, I don't mind training. telling you, but yeah. hey. But know, this is our livelihood. If you, if, you, if you work on cars, I'm not going to tell you to come, like, change my oil and for change free. out my transmission all the time. Like, I don't mind helping you and give you a little tidbits of knowledge and, like, we put this stuff out in videos to gain influence because we would like to take this to another level and yeah, we have big dreams. Our, our, we have dreams just like everyone else. Yeah, like open up a gym one day and we can, you know, do our ministry or whatever through, through the gym. Like Jesus and Games is a, yeah, that's actually a cool gym. <laughs> the Games <laughs> Kingdom. Yeah, bam. There you go. Yeah. Uh, but we don't mind helping out, but like, don't just look at our stuff and be like, hey. I feel like your family, especially, they should be the first ones to be like, yes, sign me up. If they're, if that's their goal, like I'm not saying get interested in it because, and you have no, you know, no drive and no passion for it, or you just don't care and you don't care about being healthy or you don't want to lose weight or whatever the case may be. But those are the people who, that do want to do those things that should be supporting you. I feel like immediately. Like, yeah, it's $50 for a personal training plan per month. I mean, our gym costs more than that. Like, yeah. we pay more, you know what I mean? So, I don't know. Yes, I mean, filling up your gas costs more than that now. Like, uh, times are tough. And really, this whole thing sounds like us griping and bitching. There's probably a lot of people watching that. Oh, I'm going to turn it off. But it's, it's just us spitting truth. And, and processing. Sure, and this I'm is how sure we process. There's a lot of y'all out there that have something that you want to do, but there's so many haters in your life. And like we, there's there's so many people we'll come across online where like, well shit, how come I don't have a Nike deal or this deal? And then they're promoting people. I don't care about saying it if I hurt your feelings. There's a lot of fat ass people out there that are getting all these modeling deals that should have no no place. Yeah, because like there's absolutely a place for body positivity. I don't think there's a place within the fitness space to promote an unhealthy body or an unhealthy mind. Because, I mean... Because when I see a overweight person, first thing I think of is, oh man, because I used to be fat myself when I was a kid, but guess what? I was lazy. And I sat around Take junk food all the time, play video games. And that's the first thing I think of. See how this like this conversation transition into lazy. We want to start talking about Facebook posts and everything about yeah. lazy. This is how the podcast is gonna be, by the way. Uh, but just if you have something that you want to do, just kind of go after it. That's I guess what I'm trying to go. Yeah, and to add to that that you just said is so fitness is it says something about you when you're into fitness. It says something about your discipline. It says something about just your character in general, I think, because it takes a lot of time. It's, it's a, you know, dedication that you've got to put into it, a lot of work that you got to put into it. So, like, I find that admirable. And, I mean, I'm all for it if somebody's on their journey and they're big now and they plan know they have plans to lose or whatnot but just to promote being unhealthy in general and they're not actually working out and they're not actually making you know little steps to get better or to you know get more fit and healthy then I don't think there's a place for that in the fitness industry I just don't just like no like a lot of times modeling I'm sorry yes there's a place for body positivity and not all of us have to be stick skinny models but you want to look at someone who's healthy and who is I don't know. I don't know what else. Yeah, I wouldn't want anybody in my product that is, uh, you know, Jack Skeleton, you know, like walking around or just the same as I wouldn't want anybody walking around that's, uh, what is that fat singer that makes fun of fat people? Lizzo. Lizzo. I wouldn't <laughs> want Lizzo in <laughs> Nike sports bra and uh, yoga pants. Like, I think that just wouldn't show off the product. It's not what it's meant to be. Yeah, we're going to get canceled on our third video for fat right. shaming. But our, our first We one. don't care. We're just trying to. I'm not, it's, <laughs> I'm not fat shaming. That's not what I'm doing at all. I just, 
I just think that there is Let me tell you something about place. fat shaming. When I was a little kid, I was very overweight. And anybody that's watching this from that grew up with me in my school, they will tell you that I was overweight. There wasn't a single day that went by where I didn't get fat shamed to some degree. I was overweight. I had love handles, back fat, belly fat, a bowl cut, big glasses, wore Star, wore Star Wars shirts, yep, had bad acne. I was a walking target for any young person to make fun of. And I remember many nights going home and being like, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. And I would cry to sleep. But guess what it did later on? Is it made me have a mental Rolodex of shitty things that have been said to me that I can dive into that I can bring out in my hardest moments and I don't always go back to being like fat shame but that's one of those things that drove me you can either be a little bitch about it or you can actually do something about it and I chose to do something about it so there's two types of people so fat shaming does work now was it hurtful yes it was but I also had you know, my family to fall back on in some instances, not always, but in some instances, and I would talk to my dad about it, talk to my mom about it, my brothers were overweight. Like, it's, as long as you talk about it and get it out, and like the gym helps me, it can make you a strong person. But fat you shaming- You have to use it to make yourself a stronger person. Fat shaming can work. And most people put aside their problems for later. And these people that are being like, oh, it's body positive. No, it is not. It is unhealthy. It's promoting you, unhealthy you, lifestyle. You will die. You will have a heart attack. You know, or so, diabetes, or something will ha bad happen. Or like stroke. your joints can't take it. Like if I walked around with 200 pounds on my back, let I squat with or whatever, for every day 24/7, my back's eventually going to give up. My knees are going to give out. Like, well, I just think about when I was pregnant, how much weight that I carried around and how my back felt. Like. Yeah. So it does, it, it affects, like our skeletons are not built to carry around a bunch of extra weight. We're just not, and we're meant to move. I think a lot of people forget that we're meant to move our bodies. So whatever yeah. that looks like, yeah. walk, I mean, anything. And yeah, so and like we were just talking about this the other day because we asked like, what are, what are like two reasons why you work out? Mine, I wanna walk, when I walk into a room, I told her this. I want every dude in that room being like, the dude can kick my ass. I want that at least to be known, like he can at least hold himself up. The second one is, I want to look good, butt ass naked for this lady right here. <laughs> okay, so mine is, I want to look like I can kick your ass if I need to. Yep. And then, yeah, it is, it's nice to look good naked. So I, I, I'm on board with that one too. Yeah. I enjoy it. All right. Anywho, that's our, our rant for this day, and I guess with the third video. So, hope you guys enjoyed all that, and we'll keep you updated on workouts and I guess the podcast either on here or however we figure out we're going to do it. Yep. Yep.